Are you intimidated of Linux? Have no fear, John is here. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the basics of the Linux operating system with everything that you need to know to make you feel more comfortable to perform basic tasks and navigate through the Linux operating system. If this is the first time that we're meeting, my name is John Good. I'm a technology professional, a trainer, YouTuber, all of the above. There's no question that Linux can be intimidating. After all, many people spend a lot of their lives in the Windows operating systems at work and at home, and so Linux seems very foreign to them. I want you to sit back, relax, and get ready to learn. If you like this video, remember to leave a like and subscribe to show your support for the channel, and also check the description down below for links to full courses that I've created on other technology subjects. I also make sure to respond back to comments. So if you have any questions or you want to see certain types of videos in the future, let me know down in the comment section. All right, let's get into the video. Now I wanna go over the file and folder permissions that you need to know. So with Linux and Unix, the file permissions can be kind of confusing because they aren't exactly user-friendly as far as initially learning them kind of different as far as the scheme so you have three different types of permissions you have a read you have a write and you have an execute okay those are three types of permissions so they can be an r a w or an x now they also have a numeric representation so read is four write is two and execute is one permissions are added up when you provide multiple permissions so for instance if i give somebody read and write it is going to be four plus two you can have a maximum of a number of seven for the permissions and that would be read write and execute An example, if we have permissions of 754, okay, the first number is the owner. So the owner in this file has a seven. That means they have read, write, and execute. R, W, X, four, two, one. Okay, with me so far? The second number is for the group. So every file and folder gets assigned a group. The group in this case has a five, so a read and execute. R and X, four and one. The last number is for the world or everybody else, okay? It has a four. That means read or R or four, right? I'm going to create a file here. I am back in the slash home slash John directory. And we're going to use the ls function here. We're going to call it test.txt. Okay. There we go. So if I want to see the permissions on that file, I can do ls dash hl is usually the one that I will do. That will show all the permissions. Okay. So this is the test.txt file right here. Okay. So each level, the owner, the group, and the world, or the everybody else, three dashes here. Okay. So for the owner, we have read, write, and there's no execute set on this because it's not a script or anything. Group has read, nothing, nothing. The world has read nothing, nothing, okay? And then how you look at it here is this is the user, this is the owner, and then this is the group. Now what happens if we want to change the file folder permissions? How do we do that? Let's go into that. So you have a command called chmod. That's what you use if you want to change the permissions on a file or folder. If you want to set specific permissions, you can do chmod, for instance, 755 on the file, and that would give the owner read, write, and execute. 
group would have read and execute. Everybody else would have read and execute. It's 755. You can add specific permissions as well. So if you want to change a file into an executable file, you could do chmod. And in this case, it is the user, so u, plus x for execute, and then the file name. Chown changes the owner of a file or folder. You want to change the owner, you would do chown, the username, and then the file name. Okay, and then you can change the group only. So chown, colon, the group name, and then the file name. So let's go over to the demo machine here and let's do this. We're going to change the permissions on the test.txt file. So let's change it to all permissions for the owner for us. We'll change it to a five, which is read and execute for the group. And then we'll change it to a zero for everybody else. And then the file name. Now let's look and see what it is. Okay, so as you can see, it turned green here because it changed it to an executable for us. But now, we have read, write, and execute. The group has read and execute. Everybody else has nothing. As you can see here, this was the original. Okay, so we originally had read, write, group had read, and everybody else had read. So now we're going to change the file back. So we'll do chmod. We had it at six, and then four, four. Okay, so now we'll see the permissions are back to so read and write for us, read for the group, and read for the world. Now we're going to turn this into an executable by adding individual permissions. So chmod u plus x, and then test.txt. Okay, now you can see we have changed the test.txt into an executable file just by adding that individual permission. Now we're going to change the owner of the actual file. So we're going to do chown. We're going to change it to root and then test.txt. And we might have to do sudo here. Now, I use the sudo command because there are commands that you're not going to be able to use unless you're in a certain privilege level. But basically, sudo allows you to run permissions and privileges as the root user. So I had to do that in order to change that file to a root owner. That's just because of how the permissions are set up right now. Normally, in a real environment, you probably won't have that ability, but it depends especially if you're in like a development environment. Now let's change the group owner. So we're going to do chown. We're going to change the group to root. I think there's a root group on here. So remember colon root and then test.txt. Again, we have to do the sudo command here. So do that. Now, this used to be John, John. Now it's root, root. Okay. Now, if we want to change the user and the group ownership at the same time, we can change it back to us. And, and so we do the user colon the group. And if we look at that, now let's change back to John John. Now, there are special permissions within the Linux and Unix operating system that you're going to want to be aware of. The first is the SUID. Now, the thing with this is if this is set on a file, and let's say it's an executable, whatever that script does or that file does, 
whoever can run it runs it at the permission level of that user. Okay. So like we were changing that file to the root owner, okay, if that was a script and let's say it had add user in it, it was adding users, then if I can run that, I can actually run that as root and add users. That's very, very dangerous, okay? And these all kind of fall within that line because you also have set group ID which does the same thing, except it uses the group permissions. Now, if you see these in your environment, you want to be very skeptical if you're in security or IT or anything like that, because that can definitely pose a risk. We then have the sticky bit, which only allows the owner of the file or folder to delete or rename. Okay, so if you had a folder, and you had information in there and the sticky bit was set, then somebody is not going to be able to actually delete things in there. Now I wanna show you what that looks like just so you can see the permissions. We are going to set the user ID on that test.txt file first. We're going to do chmod, and actually I'll probably have to do this with sudo. So sudo chmod u plus s, and then test.txt, right? Let's look at what it shows. So as you can see, now it's red, so it's got a different color to it. Look in the owner column here. You have an S, okay? That is the set UID. Now, if we do the same thing, oops, sudo chmod g plus s, and then test.txt, okay, let's look at the permissions. So now you have this S in the group section, okay? So S, S, set UID, set GID. Now, if we're going to set the sticky bit, we'll do sudo chmod plus T test.txt. Okay, let's look at the permissions. Now you have the sticky bit set. Okay, so if you see an S, an S, or a T, be very alert. Okay, so question of the day What is driving you to learn about Linux? Are you trying to do it for a certification? Are you trying to do it for general knowledge? Are you trying to do it for maybe a new job? Let me know down in the comments what your driver for learning Linux is. Remember to look in the description for links for full courses that I've created. Remember to leave a like and subscribe for future content so you don't miss out. And until next time, I'll see you later.